Who is the Redeemer in the book of Genesis? It's Joseph. He saved their lives. First he saves the Gentiles. Then he saves his brothers, the Jews. He saves them through his suffering. He saves, he saves them through his righteousness. He saves them through his wisdom. He saves them through his endurance. He saves them through his mercy and grace. He is like Jesus. Why is David not descended from Joseph's sons, Ephraim and Manasseh, or Manasseh? Why is Jesus descended from Judah? We don't need a reason. It's simply according to God's gracious choice, God's sovereignty. But maybe there is a reason. Maybe he, we have discovered a reason. Because there is one simple way that Judah is greater than Joseph. So far in the story, Jake, Joseph is wonderful and Judah is terrible. Look at what Judah did in Genesis 37 when he sold his little brother. Look at what Judah did in chapter 38 when he had sex with his daughter-in-law buying her as a prostitute and wanting to kill her because of her immorality. How terrible is Judah? He's awful. Judah is awful. Joseph is wonderful. But there's one little way that Judah is greater than Joseph. Joseph didn't volunteer to be a redeemer. Joseph didn't say, I'll go to Egypt, I want to go to Egypt, I'll stay in Egypt, send me to Egypt. No, no, no. Joseph said, please don't do this to me. Please don't send me down there. Joseph went to Egypt against his will. But by the end of chapter 44, Judah says, Take me and let these others go. Take me and let Benjamin go. Let me be a slave, but let my little half-brother, the, the son of Rachel, who is not my mother, let him go back and be free and live with my father. Now let me show you something. Turn in the New Testament. To John chapter 18, the Gospel of John chapter 18. John 18 is the story of Jesus' arrest in the Garden of Gethsemane on the night before He's crucified. It's the story of Judas arriving in the Garden with the party of Roman soldiers from the chief priests. Jesus says to the arresting party in John 18, 7, Who are you looking for? They say, Jesus the Nazarene. Jesus answers, answered, I told you that I am He. So if you seek me, let these others go. You see what Jesus is saying? Take me and let them go. You see what Judah is saying in Genesis 44? Take me and let these others go. So what's happened? Judah has become like Christ. You see, Judah didn't, Joseph did not volunteer to be a slave in Egypt. 
He was forced to be a slave in Egypt. Judah did volunteer. Now, look at the first verse of chapter 45. Then Joseph could not control himself. Why? Because he saw what happened. He saw the change in Judah. He saw that Judah had been... See, first he redeemed them physically. He saved their lives. He kept them from starving to death. But now he had saved them spiritually. Judah has repented. He's become a new man. He's willing to suffer so his little brother doesn't suffer. And Joseph sees it. You see why Joseph's plan was great? You see why Joseph's plan was perfect? How else could this have happened if Joseph had not done it the way he did it? And when Joseph sees the change in Judah, it overwhelms him. And he begins to cry uncontrollably. So he makes everybody leave. Have everyone go away from me. So there was no man in the room when Joseph made himself known to his brothers. Now, there are a lot of dramatic scenes in the Old Testament. I think creation is a dramatic scene. I think that the, um, the scene on Mount Moriah when the angel appeared and stopped the hand of Abraham over his son's throat was a very dramatic scene. I think the parting of the Red Sea in the book of Exodus was a dramatic scene. I think the scene on top of the mountain in 1 Kings 18 when fire came down out of the sky and consumed the altar when Elijah prayed in front of the priests and prophets of Baal, I think that was a very dramatic scene. Very dramatic. But you know what? I think Genesis 45 Verse 3 is the most dramatic scene in the Old Testament. Because at that moment, Joseph says, I am Joseph. Is my father really alive? There's nothing like that. Can you imagine? Can you imagine how they felt? Do you know there's going to be another scene like that? Do you know that Zechariah 14 in the Old Testament describes the coming of the Messiah? It's in the Old Testament. And it says that the Messiah's foot will touch down on the Mount of Olives. One half of the mountain will go one way. The other half of the mountain will go the other way. The Mount of Olives was the last place that Jesus Christ stood on this earth. Acts chapter 1. I can't prove it, but I believe that when the Lord comes back, His foot will touch on the same footprint that he left from on the Mount of Olives. He will go down the western side of the mountain. He will enter the Valley of Jehoshaphat. He will cross the little stream called Kidron. He will go up through the Garden of Gethsemane where he was arrested. And he will go through the eastern gate of Jerusalem, the Golden Gate, which is now sealed. And he will enter Jerusalem. And you know what I think you'll say? I am Jesus. This scene will be repeated. 
before all of Israel. I am Jesus whom you rejected. I am Jesus whom you persecuted. I am Jesus whom you wanted dead. And I am Jesus who redeemed you and kept you alive. And you didn't know who I was. You see what's happened. You see what God has done. It's an amazing thing. We strive to serve the contemporary Christian community with a variety of Christian educational and evangelistic resources. To see TVS Seminary's database, please visit tvsseminary.com.